Hello, my name is Allison, and this video is brought to you by the Math and Science Learning Center as part of the Quantitative Literacy and Reasoning Lecture Series. This video will cover annual percentage yield and continuous compounding. So let's start by taking a look at basic compound interest. When we talk about compound interest, we are generally given an annual percentage rate, which tells us the amount of interest that is charged over one year. Now, the thing with compounding is, is that it happens within that year, and so we end up splitting this rate into a periodic rate. We divide the APR by the number of compoundings, and that smaller interest rate gets charged each compounding. But because we're charging it to a larger amount each time, we end up actually generating more interest than our original APR. So this value, this larger value, gets a name of annual percentage yield. So what we're essentially doing with annual percentage yield is we're converting our compound interest for one year back into a simple interest form where if we applied all of the interest at one time that's earned through compounding, it would be our APY. Now, we're just talking about the percentage here. We're not looking for a dollar amount. Uh, we only want the amount of interest that is earned in a year. Notice that what we're essentially doing in this formula is we're taking our compound interest formula and just making t equal to 1. Now, we can also find our APY by simply finding the amount of interest that we would earn in one year and then dividing that amount by the principal amount. So, for instance, let's say you invest $1,000 in an account that is compounded monthly with an APR of 6%, and we want to find the annual percentage yield. So let's take our first, our formula first to find this. All right, so we don't even need the $1,000 at first if we're going to use this formula. We do need our APR of 6%. And we need to know that it's compounded monthly. So when something is compounded monthly, that means it's compounded 12 times in one year. Okay, so we can say that our APR is 0 0.06 because we're always going to use a decimal rather than a percentage version when we are in our formula and then we divide that by 12 to represent the 12 times that is compounded. So when we work all of that out, we should find that we get an APY of 0 0.061678 or so. It's a little bit rounded, right? And finally, we can convert that back to a percentage by moving that decimal place over. So we find that the actual interest rate is 6.17%, so a little bit higher than our original APY. That's something to note that is always the case. Our APR is always going to be less than or equal to our APY. We can also find this in the other method by just finding the total compounded amount um, after one year and then taking the extra interest and dividing it by the principal. So if we take our compound interest formula and apply the same thing, so we've got $1,000 and use the same, divided by 12 with one year, we will find a dollar amount of $1,061 and 68 cents. So I'm only concerned with the amount earned. So I take my total amount and subtract away the principal to find that I got $61.68 in that first year. So to find the APY, I can simply divide that by a thousand and I should get 0 0.06168, or in other words, 6.17 if we round. So even though we had an APR of 6%, if we want to get all of our interest at one time, we would actually be generating 6.17% in interest, which is great in terms of a savings account, but you do have to be careful because the same idea applies with credit cards. 
uh, meaning that even though they tell you a certain interest rate, you might actually be getting charged quite a bit more depending on how much um, or how often it is compounded. Now let's take this scenario a little bit further and look at how the different frequencies of compounding affects our APY. So I think it's pretty clear. Uh, the more we compound, the more we're going to earn, which obviously means that our APY is going to be higher. Now, the thing to notice, though, is that as we get to the end of this chart, even though we're compounding more frequently, our APY seems to be reaching a limit. Why is that the case? To understand why this is, we have to look back at our compounding interest formula. So if we look back at our formula here, looking at the stuff in the box, we need to ask ourselves the question, what happens as n gets really big, right? When n gets really big, that means that we're compounding more frequently. So we noticed in our chart that it seemed to be capping off at a certain place or arriving at a limit, but we don't really know yet what's happening there. So we need to ask the question, what happens if n gets really, really big? So if we're going to ask that question mathematically, the way we write that is by saying the limit as n approaches infinity. Now, this is calculus stuff, so it's a little bit beyond the scope of this class. So don't worry too much about the, the notation. Just worry about the fact that we're asking the question, what happens if we compound a lot? Yeah, if we compound every hour every minute, every second, every millisecond. That's essentially what we're asking. So when we look at this boxed section and we ask ourselves the question, what happens when n gets really, really big? If we apply some calculus, we find that it's going to approach a number called e. I know that sounds ridiculous that e is a number. However, there's this really great mathematician named um, Euler who got a number named after him. And so e is actually representative of 2.718281828459, so on and so forth. It goes on into infinity because it's an irrational number. And so it's a special value that we find when some calculus gets applied to this compound interest formula where our formula ends up reaching an actual limit to the amount that it can go up. So even though we're compounding more and more and more at a certain point, it doesn't matter anymore because we found our cap. All right, so we call this continuously compounding. What we're saying is n gets really huge, we're compounding all the time, and so it approaches this formula where we have, again, e, which is our Euler number, that 2.71828 business. Okay, so now let's take our previous example and see what happens when we continuously compound. What we're essentially saying is, what's the best case scenario? So, we're investing $1,000 in an account that is now compounding continuously with an APR of 6%. We're going to find the amount that's in the account after one year, and we're going to find the annual percentage yield. All right, so now using our compounding continuously uh, formula, we find P is going to be 1,000 times E, which you can find in your calculator rather than having to round. We raise E to the 6%, so we go 0 0.06 times T. And we're finding it after one year, so we can multiply by one in the exponent. And when we find that, we find that we have $1,061.84 in our account in the best case scenario. So this means we have an APY of 0 0.06184, or in other words, we can cap it off at about... 6.18% or so. So what we've essentially found here with our continuous compounding formula is the best case scenario for investing $1,000 in an account with an APR of 6%. We've also found how much it's actually earning over the total year, which is 6.18%.
Hopefully this video has helped you in your understanding of annual percentage yield and continuous compounding. However, if you still have questions, please feel free to visit the Math and Science Learning Center and a tutor should be able to help you there.